Okay, let me pull up the stream thing. Shoot. Okay, this is live. Okay, so I'm going to be doing a little something a little bit different. So I get some viewers like live streams, like some viewers like the pre-recorded, so I'm going to be doing a mix of both. I'm going to be stream rec streaming the pre-recorded, uh, well, I'm going to be streaming the repair, pre-recording it, deleting the stream after it's over, editing, and then uploading it. So we're going to do that. We're going to start on our first board. So I have my chat right here, and we're going to grab ignore the Q-tips all over the floor. I should probably pick this up. Pick up some. I'll pick up the rest later. So it looks like we have... An A1466 with no backlight. I will pre record in a second. Gotta love when you knock stuff over. That's a mess. Chargers. Sound, yeah, we have sound. All right. First, let me confirm that I can see the Apple logo. This isn't no image. I heard a chime, so it's going to be good. Three, two, one. Hi everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at an A1466 with no backlight on the screen. So I know this is no backlight, not no image, because I have my light here, and I can shine this at the Apple logo, and we can see that there's a faint image right here. Might be hard to see right here, but we can see there's an image here. Might, yeah, you can see an image. So, error no backlight is a very common issue. Probably liquid damage, but we're going to find out. So we're going to go ahead and take this apart, check a few things, go over a few things, and go from there. The first one of these is probably going to turn out really lousy, because I was messing with my microscope light. Maybe I won't pre-record. Where's my P2? Come on, or my P5. Here it is. I got happy when I saw this in my queue. No backlight A1466. Rob is here, Teresa is here, Travis is here, Richard is here, James is here. Maybe notifications actually worked.
Did you already fix no green light on charger? Huh? I get many boards with no green light on charger. That's surprising. Three, two, one. Okay, our, bo our uh, bottom cover's off, so we're going to go ahead and check a few things. So one, I want to check the first thing is voltage on both sides of the backlight fuse. Now, although uncommon for the fuse to fail in and of itself, we still want to check that. So our backlight fuse is going to be right over here. One side, the, the side to the backlight, we have 8.6 volts, so we know that that is not blown. The second voltage I want to check is going to be backlight output voltage. So backlight output voltage is going to tell me a few things. If I have 8 volts... I know backlight is not boosting. It's probably an issue with the LP8550. If I have 18 volts, it means it's partially boosting. Maybe something wrong with the LP8550. Maybe something's wrong in the circuit. If I have zero volts, I know that there's a short or blown fuse. That's probably not the case anymore. Or if I have um, 39 to 50 volts, I it means there's no load on the circuit, which means either the cable or the screen is bad, or the connector in rare cases. So we're going to go ahead and check backlight output voltage. And that is 8.58 volts, meaning the backlight circuit is not boosting or the enable is not present. So, are you kidding me? Unspecified error occurred while recording. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta do that all over again. Oh well. All right, I'm gonna repeat myself because the recording part did not take that. Okay, we have our bottom cover off, and the first thing I want to check is gonna be voltage on both sides of the backlight fuse. So, although this is an uncommon failure, it does happen, especially if you change your screen or something and don't unplug the battery. So, I'm going to check voltage on both sides. Here's the before side, which is just PP bus, 8.6 volts. And then the after side is 8.6 volts, so we know our fuse is not blown. The second voltage I'm going to check is going to be backlight output voltage. So, this is going to tell me a few things. So, if I have 8 volts, around 8 volts on backlight output, I know the circuit is not boosting. It's probably an issue with the LPD550. If it is 18 volts, it's partially boosting, either an issue within the circuit or with the LP8550 again. Or if it's 39 to 50 volts, it means that there's no load on the circuit, so either bad connector, screen cable, or screen. So next up, we're going to check that, and that is 8.59 volts. So we have an issue with our, probably with our backlight driver, it's probably going to be the blown pin 5. Uh, sometimes you can even see right here near the diode, and that's not the case. So we're going to go ahead and take the board out and have a look on the other side and see what's there and go ahead and fix it. All right, so let's pull the board out. Only when YouTube feels like pushing notifications out, it did not have any notifications for four days last week. Yeah, that's typical. T5. Had this customer a few minutes ago. S some. This person is legitimately nice when you may get a jerk that would try and extort this and use this against you. So it was like 11 something at night. I was still at work. I got an email. They submitted a website request, yeah, you know, a form site submission on a quote for a screen. So the screen industry or the parts industry right now is kind of a mess with the coronavirus nonsense stopping stuff from out of China. And I quoted them for B, B, B plus grade screen, and the, it was the screen was three ninety nine, and I told them it's it's three ninety nine plus one twenty five for installation, and the total is four twenty five. So they kept saying like, "Oh, something doesn't sound right," and I'm thinking like, "What? What are you talking about? Something doesn't sound right." You know, maybe this person's crazy or something. I was not looking. And then they said, then they pointed out, you know, 
four twenty five or three ninety nine plus one twenty five is um five twenty five, not four twenty five like you said. And I'm thinking like what? Uh, no, I didn't do that and I look back, shoot, I misquoted. I said um you know, they were so understanding though, that makes makes everything worth it. That was just funny. Next time I should probably leave that for the morning. Oh boy, dead. Tim sucks every day. Bad tech report for fraud. What happens if you receive a com computer with coronavirus? So I've gotten computer from outside of the country, from one of the places that it's kind of spreading pretty good right now, and I've gotten one from the hotbed in Washington. So what I've been doing is on every single device that comes in here, they've been getting wiped down with three things. So when we get a device in, I wear gloves, I bring it to a special area right over here. First, it gets wiped down with this. This is Pure Green 24. It's a healthcare disinfectant, citric acid, and silver, EPA registered. Gets wiped down with this. After being wiped down with that, it gets wiped down with Lysol, all-purpose cleaner. This is what we usually use to clean them. And then after that, it gets wiped down a third time with this Clorox commercial 4-in-1 ethanol disinfectant. Ethanol kills fast when the other stuff has to sit. So if there's anything missed, the ethanol will take care of it. And that process is also repeated when I'm done. So if it picks up something else, it'll kill it. So that's what I'm doing to stay healthy. Do you ha at this point, do you have any idea in round numbers how many boards you've worked on in your life? I don't know. A lot. Quite a few. I'm coughing at anything you order from us. I don't care. That's why I don't order. I'm not worried about myself getting that. It's minor for people like myself, but other members of my family that could have uh, passed it on to is what I'm concerned about because their symptoms would not be so minor most likely. I'll just set this here. First time catching you live. Really appreciate your videos. Thank you very much for watching. All right, so we're going to do take two of the pre-recorded. Um, take the SSD out. Board is out, so let's go ahead and look under the microscope and see what we find. So let's switch over to our microscope here. And the first thing I want to take a look at is going to be our screen connector. So there's something very common is either the uh, probe point right here will be all blown out and nasty, and that's perfectly fine. Or we have a, we'll have corrosion right here, and again, that's perfectly fine. So that moves on to our backlight driver. And if you remember earlier, I said it probably would be around pin 5, and what do you know? Where is it? Oh, moving too quick. Pin 5, see that? This is our backlight driver. This is responsible from changing 8.5 volts into our 50 volts for our screen, which is going to get pulled down. So this is the feedbacks. This is the feedback trace. It's all corroded. So if our feedback trace is corroded, the circuit's not going to know what it's doing. So many of you guys already know this, but the circuit needs to know what it's doing in order to adjust itself. So if there's an issue with the feedback trace, if that's blown away, it's going to say, hey, I don't know what I'm creating. I'm going to go ahead and shut down and not, not boost this. So feedback is essential to the circuit. So if we have an issue on feedback, then nothing's going to work. So let's go ahead and remove this backlight driver. And we will go ahead and check our feedback trace as well. So let's go ahead and add a little flux. Kick on our fume extractor, hot air, and soldering equipment.
And what do you know? Now look at this. This is interesting. See how that ball is? It's almost like the chip melted right there. Kind of think the ch chip melted a bit, and that's why we got that. So we'll go ahead and take care of this stuff right here with our iron. My solder spool fell. good enough we don't want to be too hard on the wick I always tell people that you know you don't have to just scrape away at the whole board for that just light pressure is fine so now what we have to do we want to check our feedback so here's our feedback pin right here we are going to measure this so here's one side we have continuity there, and then this is to go into the other side of the board. So we should be good. We could just put a chip there. Nothing else is needed. I can't tell you how many times I haven't checked that, put the chip on, and then it doesn't work because that trace is blown, and then I have to waste a chip and put a new one on after I ran a wire there. So we're going to go ahead. A little bit more flux. Grab a LP8550 from our spool here. Still have a few hundred of these things left. Maybe a couple hundred. I haven't counted. We have enough. going the right way. As long as it's aligned close, that's fine. So we'll start out with some heat from far away. And just like that, you can see it moved into place. We should be good to go. We're going to let that cool for a second, and then we're going to test it. And now, the person that actually measures is the one that doesn't run that janky wire around and under the chip all the way to the other side of the board from the ball when you don't trust somebody because they tell you to run it from the probe point on your first week on the job. This is cool enough. Shoot, we have 19 people watching. Better than I expected. I was expecting like six. Now, I'm going to start sharing your secrets on this channel if you don't stop. Because I'm sure some YouTube viewers would love to know some of your secrets now.
exactly what Teresa said. YouTube would love to know all those details. Poor now. We're picking on him. He deserves it, though. Tim fixed a MacBook for me. Someone gave it to me because they spilled coffee in it. I'm glad I fixed your MacBook. Alright. So now we have to go back to the pre-recorded thing. Uh... So 165, yeah. Um, I'll just use this SSD. All right, let's see if we get backlight. So we just plugged in our charger here. We're gonna give it a minute to turn on. And our fan is spinning, so we should get something on the screen here. We're gonna give it a second for it to post. Might take a second. And that looks like a backlight. Let's let it get the Apple logo. This is a test SSD, not a customer's SSD, so you will not see any customer information. But we will at least get an Apple logo. But our screen is nice and lit up. Anytime you don't have the drive set as the startup drive in your OS, it's going to boot up a little bit slow. Or it won't show the Apple logo very quickly. So we're just going to wait. And hopefully we will see something on our screen. And what do you know? Apple logo, this is fixed. So thank you for watching, and I hope this video helps you solve your problem. Martin is here. I hope your SSD died. I hope your SSD dies, Anel. Anel was supposed to come here and help for like two weeks and then he decided not to so that was the story there and now was supposed to come help out and he was whining about how he wants to go other places and I don't have STDs I get checked regularly says Anel oh that's his SST <laughs> oh well I figured it was the other thing I think California did not allow him into the state. Probably. <laughs> Alright, ultrasonic's going on. No whining about sound, about how you can't hear anything because the ultrasonic is on. In three, two, one. Who's looking through the door behind you? There is no door. Now, we have so soundproofing foam because there is too much noise behind that door now. Remember that one time I got you? Yeah, that was funny. Well, here's the thing: when that when you got me like that, that was on the like, that was when I just moved in and there was weird stuff happening. That was funny. <laughs> now we just get creeps that show up at like 10 p.m. and tug on the door. Are you open? Nope. Why aren't you open? Because it's 10 p.m. Well, you're here. Yep, I am here. But that doesn't mean you could come in.
I am ready for this virus nonsense to be over so I can reliably get parts again. Because it's getting old. I'm only wearing gloves right now because I have to do stuff in the ultrasonic. One minute, and then we flip it, and then we do another three minutes, and then we're done. Aaron is here. What do we have next? What the heck is this? Oh, very, very bad. Poor CPU. Oh no, Anel is here too. This is not good. Anel, can't you just leave my boards alone? Uh, do you ever hear of MacBook Pro not crashing or crashing every day at 7:30 a.m.? Um, I don't think the 7:30 a.m. has anything to do with it. Is it a late 2013 or early 2013? What year is it? If it's a late 2013 to 2015, replace the CPU MOSFETs with FMD F6807s like a... No, this is fine. Mid-2014, replace the CPU MOSFETs. Alright, what's this thing do? Dead. MacBook is not breathing. Sad. Truly sad. All right, big warning. If you're on headphones, you better turn your volume down because this is going about to be some serious hearing damage here. So sorry for this, but it has to be done.
almost done. Just have to get it dry enough to put it in the oven. Now let's see how many people are whining about that, because I'm sure that caused some serious hearing damage to most people. Only one. Only one. Only one. Oh, my neck is sore for some reason. It's strange. Actually, it's not, because I know why it's sore. Alright, three, two... Three, what, what the, what the heck is this? Support assist. This is not a Dell computer. How the heck did that get on there? What the, that, no, no, go away, go. This is not even a Dell computer. I don't know how the heck support assist got on there. I, okay, this is how this got on here. This is the same drive in this from a Dell that I had two years ago or a year ago, and I just switched it to this. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay, today we have a heavily liquid damaged A1466 that does not turn on. So we're going to go ahead What's go ahead and explain what's wrong with this, and we're going to go ahead and... Stupid. Okay, first thing. I forgot to change the directory on this, and that was sucked. So we are going to redo this. Open that Adobe Flash update I sent you, huh? Maybe. I have no antivirus whatsoever on here, Richard. Just Windows Defender, which is fine. Um, recording, change directory. No. Three six fourteen sixty six. No power. You opened a link from Anel. No, I think Anel has to be careful of the links he he opens from me, not from the other way around. But anyway. We should code something and send it to Anel. Yeah, it's kind of illegal to do it on live stream. Anyway. Three, two, one. Okay. Unspecified error. Take three. Okay, today we have a heavily liquid damaged A1466 that does not turn on. So we're going to go ahead and take this apart and figure out what's wrong with it and why it doesn't turn on. It would be funny to send an L an Adobe update. Who votes we send an L an Adobe update in this chat? Who wants to see an L get sent an Adobe update? No, I better not say that. Because then someone's going to report me for something that I'm not even doing. You always keep Adobe up to date. I agree.
That's fake. I promise we're not going to send anything to an L. That's not good. I don't think Anel would like if we did that to him, so we won't do that to him. If we do, we'll do it later, not on live stream. Oh no. Oh no. This, uh, Nelly, you got to get out of my chat. I'm seriously, serious. You, you got to get out of my chat. This is, uh, <laughs> that CPU is going to be dead. Uh, this is where, <laughs> actually, no, this is actually not, not going to be dead. I don't think. <laughs> That's right on the PCH support area. That just screams dead CPU. We should do something really nice for now just to mess with him. Okay, I'll do something nice. A little bit by the CPU too. <sighs> Alright, how am I gonna record this? Three, two, one. Okay, we unspecified error. Hate when that happens. Three, two, one. Okay, our board is out of the enclosure, and who could spot what's wrong from here? We have some corrosion right by our important areas of the board, so we're going to switch over to microscope view and have a look. So, the worst area is going to be by the PCH, so if you look, here's our CPU. Here is this. So this is all on important areas for PCH. My guess is not too much of this is bad, but all that crosstalk is not going to be good. So the first thing we really need to do is clean this up with a f no clean flux and see what needs to be done. So let's put some flux down here. This tube is almost out, so it's getting really hard to push out. That's okay. So we're just going to put some flux down, clean it up. I can tell you right now that these guys are no good. So we're going to go ahead and take these out. Now keep in mind what's on the other side of this. So we don't want to be heating this too much. Because our CPU is literally right on the other side. And if we are heating stuff on this side, our CPU is actively being burned. So we want to be very careful with heat here. Also, these guys don't look too good. Mm. 
Neither does this one. Alright, so most everything now in this area is gone. That looks bad. But we are going to clean this up with Q-tip and alcohol. And take away everything that looks bad. See, this looks much better now. Doesn't look quite as scary as it did before, but it still needs that stuff put back on for it to work. And I bet after this, we will get a nice fan spin. We have some few areas of corrosion on the board, but they're not too, too serious. So, should be good to go. Alright, so that's clean. Let's go ahead and put some fresh solder and flux down. See that right there? I bet that was our issue. See that? That pad? That non-existent pad? That pad is very much so non-existent. rest this isn't that bad oh that's not good right here if that was a via that's not good because that's falling apart but it looks like that was our only one that was falling apart so we, we're going to take our chances and hope that that was just a probe point which I think it was and not a via if it was a via then we may have other issues but put some flux down Also want to kind of resolder anything here that's that I touched or that was corroded before and hmm where did that guy come from? I don't know where that resistor came from. We'll find it. I saw it on the edge of the iron. Where did you come from? I don't know. doesn't have to look perfect just good enough because we're going to use hot air and flow everything nice into place so let's grab a donor board for 00165 or 3437 they're all about the same remember what I said we don't want to burn our CPU which is right on the other side of this board so we're going to be very careful We don't have to align everything perfect because it's all going to flow into place here. You'll see. A little more flux would be helpful. Did you take the heat sink off or leave it on, says Joe. I took the heat sink off. And for those that are going to be watching the pre-recorded version of this, yes, this is a dual stream and recording. New recording format.
going to lower my temp just a bit. I don't like how the components are getting discolored, so I'm going to go down to like 380 off of 430. Looks like we're out of that tube finally, so we will grab our... more flux it's starting to get dry I basically want to keep flux on everything when I start to see it getting a little bit dry there so let's see I think we got all you guys what about that one up there so there's one two Now we have a few caps here. We have one here. Not the right one. Now, as you can see, not all these are going to be the prettiest of joints. So what I'm going to do is just flux everything up again. And then we will grab a little bit of a smaller tip and go ahead and touch up anything that looks a little bit ugly so I'm gonna select this nice J tip for this and we're gonna touch up everything that looks a little bit ugly just to make it look more professional and just better I'm gonna have to go up and temp a bit because this J tip doesn't have the same thermal mass Doesn't have to be perfect, just that looks good to me. I don't think we missed anything. I think we're good here. This board is most likely way too hot to turn on, so we're gonna go let let this cool down a little bit and then we'll be right back. Alright, let's go back to chat. I don't use full heat. That was 372 degrees. So shut up. Lewis has melted stuff from opposite side of board before. So have I.
One of these days, and now you're gonna really get in trouble when you see me. You better hope that leg is healed, or the spine, or whatever the heck is wrong with you now. Uh, should we turn it on yet? I want to see if this will turn on, and then we'll go back to pre-recorded. It's not going to turn on. Because that JTAG and that ISL. No way, it does turn on. <laughs> okay. So we'll go to pre-recorded time. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and plug this in to see if it will turn on initially. Keep in mind there is still some other stuff around this board we need to address before we can just let it go. But our charger's plugged in. Let's wait. And we do get a fan spin, so this is partially fixed. So let's go over the other areas of this board. So one, our JTAG connector, we can't leave that on there. There is some corrosion by that MOSFET. Doesn't really need to be replaced. And the 3v42 regulator needs to go. That is no good. And oh, this right here has to go for sure. That's our Thunderbolt controller. Our ISL6259. It's a little bit corroded, but the legs of the chip still look okay, so that can get away with some flux and um, flux and solder. And then ultrasonic, of course, so I'll just go ahead and do that right now because that's going to be the easiest. So we'll put some flux down. Flux and solder on the edge of that chip. J tips are sometimes not the best for this. As you can see, so let's see. The BC one is really nice for QFN. Switch to the BC one. It's always nice to have some tips on standby because not every tip is not every tip is good for every job. So you need trying a new this flux I'm using right now is arm Amtec RMA223 not the um not the fake one it's the actual real one but it's not very good it's nothing like 559 or 560 so this cap let's see that's fine so we are good here the ISL is good we'll move on to this right here we cannot let a JTAG stay on a board. That would be very, 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 very unethical and disgusting of me to leave a JTAG connector on an Apple motherboard. Because we don't like JTAGs here. We would like JTAGs to be gone. JTAGs are not our friend. JTAGs are enemies. JTAG is gone. Next area of concern is our 3V42 regulator. That can't stay on the board. Even though this technically works, this works, but it's not going to work after ultrasonic it and it's not going to work in six months. So. Get this epoxy stuff out of here. It's gone, gone, gone.
See that pin right there? You don't want to leave that on your customer's board, trust me. So we don't really offer an ultrasonic cleaning solution because anytime you see corrosion like that, it's going to need board repair usually. I used to do like $75 for cleanings, but no. Because this happens and... More scraping right there. So there's actually a layer of oxidation that you don't see. Sometimes wicking is helpful for that too. What basically why the solder's not sticking, there's a layer of oxidation on that pad. And if we're not careful, we'll what we'll do is end up putting solder on top. Something to note in the video you cannot really see this but there's actually a layer of oxidation on there so I don't know maybe now you can see it but we're putting solder on top of that and that's giving us the illusion that it's okay when it's really not a little bent up not a big deal now though that oxidation should be removed and we should be able to get a nice tin on that pad like that more flux. This 223 is not the best. Let's grab a reg off this board. That's good to go. So our last area that I was, uh, this, yeah. So how I determine if a chip needs a replacement is how I look at the pins. If the pin is a little bit corroded but there's no discoloration like the pad is, or the pin is not turning gray, that's fine. But then when we get pin degradation like right here, see that, that one pin? That would mean I replace this chip. That's how I determine if I should replace something or not, is how the pin looks. Because it tells me if it was on long enough, how, if it was on long enough for 
the pin to turn gray like that, then that means the chip probably suffered some internal damage and I should replace it. Otherwise it could stay. Same with capacitors and stuff. And probably this is the worst chip on the board. This is the Thunderbolt controller. Hopefully it won't be blown out underneath. I don't think it will be. It just looks pretty bad. So we'll go ahead and put flux. Okay, stop recording for a second, let me catch up on chat. Tom says, Tim, I really appreciate how you explain what's happening, like the oxidation. Some of us, like Anel, some of like Anel have almighty skills, but there's some of us that are noob level thinking that we could learn. Well, I'm glad. Are your neighbors still having underage rave parties? Um, I didn't hear anything. Maybe the mic picked up on it. I've mostly tuned them out now. I don't really pay attention to them much. Second. Just cleaning this up with a Q-tip. And doesn't look too bad. There's no internal board damage. The pads look pretty good. We still want to replace that chip, though. And that cap. So now what I'm going to do is just scrape away at the little... <sighs> Another unspecified error while recording, of course. Okay, just clean this area with a Q-tip real quick, and looks pretty good. There's a little area right here of oxidation. We're going to want to scrape away at that, but it's not that bad. We're still going to want to replace that chip, but it's not that terrible. Put a little flux down, clean it up with some leaded solder. Drop a new chip on there. We, we will be good. I only have to wick the center pads, actually. See, there's a big ground plane on that one. Anytime you get that where it doesn't... Back to the thing about the tips. Always have different tips ready, like I said. Big ground plane, I'm going to switch to my BC2. And the interface of this Hacko iron really makes it easy to hot swap tips. I don't want to really burn the Wi-Fi card either, but that's that.
go ahead and grab a new chip. So this particular donor that I have has that stolen off of, but we should be able to get that off of another board. That chip is so common, so we should have several of them. I do right here. That's in place, good enough for me. I'll go ahead and push it down a little bit. And I just knocked off a resistor right here. Not a big deal. All the other pins look too good, so I don't have to do anything else there. Just need another cap, and then another resistor, then ultrasonic, and we're done. What's this resistor. We should be good to go. Let's give the board another look over. Just in case we missed anything. And I don't really think there's much remarkable, not anything that won't be dealt with with the ultrasonic here. A little bit right here, that's... Yeah, you know what? and our backlight driver. See that? I never trust these backlight drivers after liquid, so I'm going to go ahead and replace this too. Just out of precaution, because I don't want to ultrasonic this and have it, you know, have no backlight. This right here doesn't need to be replaced. It just needs to be touched up. So I'll just do this first, because this is going to be the easier one. And that's completely gone. Was that a VIA or a test point? That may have been a VIA. Let me check. That's like a sensor circuit or something. That doesn't look too critical to me. But we're going to double check. I think that was just a test point. 
00165 board view and that's for thunderbolt so yeah that's okay that'll be all right let's go back to the cap right of the um backlight driver actually i'm just gonna give this a little flux i think it'll be okay i don't think it's that bad so i'm just gonna give it a little flux and reflow and it should be all right if it's not we could come back but i don't think it's gonna have a problem So this should be good to go. We will be back when it is cleaned and booting into an OS. All right, let me check this thing now. I'm off of pre-record diode mode. Do diode mode ground right here. 2.70 diode mode ground here. Two point seven zero. It's good. All right, this board is really nasty, so it's time to clean it. Um, should I check? Make sure it's still fan spins. Probably. And then I get to go home. And sleep. Spin fan. And maybe while this is ultrasonicing, we'll make a gift for Nell. My screwdriver fell. Nell, are you still here? He's gone. Never mind. No fun in that. Cleanup time. This one's particular nasty, so we're going to give it four minutes aside instead of the usual three.
How many viewers did I lose? Just sitting idle. None. I just dropped the heatsink screws all over the floor. Gotta love that. You really do. Warren is here. We're pretty much done with the board repair for the night, so you missed the good stuff. Now we are cleaning, reassembling, and that's it. And I'm going to go home and go to sleep. I slept all the way through my alarm this morning. I set my alarm, did not wake me up, did not even interrupt my sleep. I just slept right through it. I woke up late. And I was like, what happened? And I checked my phone, missed alarm. Yeah, that's great. I swear, if there's ever an emergency or something, I would not, I would sleep right through it. There was one more screw for this. Tim, has business been busy? Yes. Tim, what drivers do you use? These are some cheap, like one dollar drivers. They're don't buy them. They're cheap. I'm cheap.
I don't know if I answered your question yet, Dr. No, but yes, business has been busy. I don't, don't remember if I answered that or not. It was slow in January, I will say that. But here's the thing, January slow, even in slow January month, the worst month of the year, I still made more than my busiest month last year. So even in the worst year of this year, or what's going to be the worst year of this year, just so far, never know, it might get worse, um, I made more than my best year last year. What the heck? Oh, I gotta take that board out anyway. But like a sore spot on my hand, I noticed. Get ready for some more ear pain. Just build a little bit of pressure.
Okay, now you guys remember how nasty this board looked before Ultrasonic. And now we'll look at after Ultrasonic. So. There's some water left, so if you see something that looks like flux, it's water. That's all water. Again, water, a little bit of flux residue. Yeah, that's RMA223. Stays on, that's harmless though. Then this area that we reworked looks nice and clean now. We'll get the sticker out of here. So yeah, this board is fixed. Get rid of this white residue. I don't like this. Yeah, I don't recommend RMA223 at all. about it for cleanup. Everything looks good. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next stream or video.